We are live. It is 11 a.m. Eastern on February 9th, 2022. And hello to all of you wise people who are tuning in to the Rubin Report direct message hosted by Dave Rubin. Instead of watching the lunatics on The View on ABC right now, you've made the right choice and I promise not to let you down. Uh, of course, uh, we are live streaming on Rumble, on YouTube and on Blaze TV. If you could subscribe tap notification bell, all that sort of stuff. It would be appreciated. Uh, and you know, we got incredible feedback yesterday from the show. We did something that we had sort of never really done here before, which is do a sort of narrative show that we didn't really cover four or five stories as we normally do, but it was a through line show for about 40 minutes, sort of tracing what has happened related to Joe Rogan and the Rumble situation and why the media is going after him and the inauthentic apologies and how cancel culture makes people do all sorts of weird things that they know deep down ain't right, but everybody's got their own stuff that they're dealing with. Um, and I really felt when we ended the show, I was like, I wanna do more of that. That was good. It felt dense and real to me. Uh, I'm give a full shout out to Phoenix, our new associate producer who helped put that together. Uh, and we thought we could do a little bit more of that kind of stuff. We're not gonna do it all the time, uh, but today we are gonna do a similar show in that you can see right now how the media and the Democrats are really shifting when it comes to the COVID narrative. You can really feel it if you're paying attention to what's online suddenly, like this shift to like, oh, we do want to open schools and we do want you out of masks and we don't want any more lockdowns and we never were really for all of those things. And you can see them doing it in real time. And the reason that they're doing it is because the midterms are coming. All the polling is showing that the Republicans are gonna win uh, the House in a landslide, maybe even the Senate, that there could be a whole bunch of other massive shifts. And the Democrats are realizing that people don't like these horrific authoritarian policies. So we're gonna give you a, a through line for the next half hour of sort of how we got here, where we were, where we're going, and we're gonna relate it to everything happening right at this very moment. So sit back, get your coffee or your tequila or whatever you're drinking, and uh, let's do this thing. So where this all started in the last couple of days, where the shift really started, was that Stacey Abrams, who is the woman who lost the Georgia gubernatorial race a couple years ago, was speaking to a classroom of children and this image leaked out. Here's Stacey Abrams. And oh my God, look at her sitting Indian style with such a big smile on her face. And as you can see, she is not masked, uh, but all the children are masked. That seems odd. I mean, she's no offense, a rather large woman. And that is one of the main comorbidities when it comes to COVID. But putting aside that, uh, this image, this really horrific, I mean, this joking aside, this is a really horrific image. Look what they have done to children and this shit eating grin that this woman has as she sits there with all of these masked children who are at no risk to each other, who are at no risk to the teachers, et cetera, et cetera. And we all know this and they keep doing it, okay? Now, Stacey Abrams, what's interesting about her is nobody really knows anything about this woman other than the media loves her. And as I said, she lost the gubernatorial race in Georgia, which by the way, she, uh, didn't really concede. You may have remembered that. Yeah, why Stacey Abrams is still saying she won. So Democrats are allowed to contest elections. They're allowed to question election authority and they're allowed to, you know, go, oh, maybe it wasn't legit. That's cool. When Republicans do it, insurrection, evil, arrest these people, they're scary. Uh, but Stacey Abrams went on CNN to explain why she took the mask off and left the kids masked. I took the mask off because I was speaking remotely to two other classrooms and wanted all of them to hear me. Oh, she just wanted people to hear her. So it was cool if maybe she was gonna transmit the deadly virus that everyone's freaking out over for the last two years. It's totally cool. She just wanted people to hear because nobody, you can talk like this. nobody could hear what you're saying. But you know, so she just, you know, in the interest of he having other classrooms that were watching on Skype hear her, she could transmit her evil, deadly germs. And in that case, it would be okay because obviously she has a lot of seriously important stuff to say. All right, it continues. Uh, 
Here is the infallible Fauci, a man who has gotten almost all of this wrong from the beginning, who has contradicted himself endlessly for two years, who has sent emails telling friends that they can go on vacation and not wear masks while he was telling us to double mask and a whole bunch more. He has been lambasted and smacked around by uh, one of our good senators, uh, Rand Paul. You guys have all seen those videos. Uh, here he is defending the forced masking of children. And what about the debate over masks in Illinois schools? Dr. Fauci says he believes masks and vaccinations are helping to keep schools open. Before we start talking about pulling back on them, let's get that dynamic of the virus in the community low enough so that we can feel safe in pulling back on the requirement for children to wear masks. Okay, so this is just the endless drivel that Fauci has given us from day one. Notice he never gives us the numbers. We have to get the dynamic low enough, something, something, something. But they never say what that low number would be, what the dynamic exactly would be. They never talk about how 99.998 or something like that percentage of children, uh, you know, survived COVID and all of that stuff. And that natural immunity works. I know you know all of this stuff. So it's just this endless drivel from this man. And then what happens is that drivel then starts affecting teachers and administrators, and this true lunatic, this is Randy Weingarten, who is the teachers union president, uh, this past weekend talking about why kids should still be in masks. What Dr. McBride just told us about masks not particularly being effective for children, what's the argument against taking off masks in schools? Well, the argument is that you have, well, let me just say this. I am in favor of an off-ramp on masks. Right. The real issue becomes, are, is, the, is, is the spread low enough so that there's no dissemination or transmission in schools? And it's not the teachers transmitting to kids. Um, it's more kids and kids, particularly in elementary schools right now. And so the question really becomes, do we have, that's why I like what Massachusetts has done, because what they've said is that on a school by school basis, they said if there's 80 percent vaccination rates, then those schools can lift the mandates. Hey, I want to be nice and not hyperbolic or anything here. Uh, that woman is a uh, soulless wench. She is a liar. OK, she has forced all of these school closures. She is a progressive activist activist masking as someone who is supposed to be running this, the, the teachers unions to keep schools open and make sure our kids are educated. Uh, but what she really is, is a progressive activist. That's all that she is. She said something there that is completely insane. She said the real issue is the spread is low enough for no dissemination. It is impossible. It is literally impossible that zero people, children, adult, whatever, will neither get COVID nor transmit COVID. In the old days, when I was a kid, sometimes there'd be a sick kid at school and he'd go to the nurse and then he'd go home. And maybe another kid got sick or maybe a teacher got sick and maybe they wouldn't come to school the next day. But there was no, there was no concept of zero COVID, that no one will ever get anything, that we will sit in hermetically sealed boxes and be perfectly safe from everything. That is counter to what life is all about. So you can see that these people just lie about everything. These are the same people, let's not forget last week, Eric Garcetti, the mayor of Los Angeles, who said he holds his breath when he takes pictures of people. Lying bullshit artist. Gavin Newsom, the, the, the psychopath running the once great state of California, who said that he wore his mask except when he was drinking water at the football game, except there's plenty of video that he didn't. And, I don't have to go into the hypocrisy about him. him. And I guess I now have to throw in $5 because I mentioned California. Let's say we're up to 150. Every time I throw in five, it becomes 25, but it's all right. Um, anyway, what I said at the top of the show is really what I want to focus on right now because it's not just the hypocrisy, right? They, they're doing the hypocrisy intentionally. They want to show you that they rule over you. That's why AOC goes to events in $50,000 gowns while all of the staff is wearing masks and she is not. They want to show you they are better than you, they control you, and you better be afraid of them. I think you all understand that now, but I wanna, what I wanna focus on today, because this is where it's now shifting, is that the narrative 
is actually moving in real time. We have seen it in the last 24 or 48 hours where suddenly, oh, masks, maybe they're not great. Maybe uh, we should open up things. Maybe we've been really the one saying this the whole time. This is CNN's Liana Wen. She is one of their medical correspondents. She's the former president of Planned Parenthood. That's just an interesting tidbit of information there. Uh, and we've got a uh, bit of a compilation of her on how the science has changed. Do you agree with the move? I do. There was a and is a time and place for pandemic restrictions. But when they were put in, it was always with the understanding that they would be removed as soon as we can. And in this case, circumstances have changed. Case counts are declining. Also, the science has changed. We know that vaccines protect very well against Omicron, which is the dominant variant. Everyone five and older have widespread access to vaccines. And we also know about one way masking, the idea that even if other people are you are not wearing masks. If you wear a high quality mask, that also protects you, the wearer, too. And so in this case, I'm not saying, I don't think anyone really is saying that no one should ever wear masks, but rather that the responsibility should shift from a government mandate imposed from the state or the local district of the school. Rather, it should shift to an individual responsibility by the family who can still decide that, that their child can wear a mask if needed. Man, that is just extraordinary. I'm not for gulags for my political opponents, but I, I don't know what you do with someone like her. I mean, that is profoundly evil. She has been pushing mandates. She has been pushing masks, the idea that everyone has to wear them. Now she's saying you could wear two and they shouldn't have to do it. Also, the science has changed. No, the science hasn't changed. And this idea that suddenly, oh, now we know that the, the vaccines work on Omicron. Two weeks ago, they were telling us it didn't work on Omicron, and that's why everybody was getting COVID over, over Christmas and, the new, and New Year's and everything else. So now here's the compilation of her saying completely the opposite over the past two years. One other thing that we're seeing now, and I think this is a response to the rise of Delta, is more willingness among governmental authorities and others to mandate the vaccine. We saw that yesterday the VA said it's going to require the vaccine for its employees. We saw the mayor of New York the governor of California. Do you anticipate seeing more in this vein, more requirements? Yes, and it cannot come soon enough. You can remain unvaccinated if you so choose, but if you want to be in public and potentially could be infecting others with a dangerous and sometimes fatal disease that's highly transmissible, then there is an obligation of society. I mean, I think you could have an opt out the way that France, for example, or Italy and other countries are doing, saying that if you want to be in bars, restaurants, movie theaters, et cetera, either be vaccinated or have proof of a recent negative test. I hope that we move in that direction as a country here, because at the end of the day, I don't really understand why people have the choice to be infecting um, our vulnerable children or immunocompromised people or even others who have taken the responsible choice to get vaccinated. Sure, and I just first want to clarify that I was opposed to the CDC yes. back in May when they lifted the indoor mask requirement. I thought that the honor code was never going to work, that when vaccinated and unvaccinated people are mixing, unless there is proof of vaccination, everybody should still be wearing masks. And so I actually support what the CDC is now doing, which is going back to this indoor mask requirement, because frankly, we know that we can't trust the unvaccinated, that they have been walking around without masks. And in fact, that's what led to the surge that we're seeing. The vaccine is the ticket back to pre-pandemic life. And the window to do that is really narrowing. I mean, you were mentioning, Chris, about how all these states are reopening. They're reopening at 100 percent. And we have a very narrow window to tie reopening policy to vaccination status, because otherwise, if everything is reopened, then what's the carrot going to be? How are we going to incentivize people to actually get the vaccine? Vaccine. So that's why I think the CDC and the Biden administration needs to come out a lot bolder and say, if you're vaccinated, you can do all these things. Here are all these freedoms that you have, because otherwise people are going to go out and enjoy these freedoms anyway. Ugh. If you need a moment to grab a bucket and puke, maybe I could pause for just a second because she's disgusting, absolutely disgusting. There is so much. It's not just that it's dishonesty in there. And, and this deep like desire to control people, but the way she says it, I don't understand why people have choice. That's what she said. I don't understand why people have the choice. I, I understand, because in America you got choice, lady, okay? That's number one. Then at the end, what's the carrot? 
if you open up everything. She's telling you we are the government, and she's a, she's a government agent. She's not a she's not a journalist, even though they put her on the clown network CNN. What is the carrot if we let them do things? Mean meaning if we just give them freedom, which they think they give us, right? Which they don't give us, but they think they give it to us. And actually, the more that we let them uh, believe that, the more that they'll keep taking. Uh, then then why why would they do what we want if they've already got the carrot, right? Because rabbits like carrots, and rabbits usually. Uh, when they're domesticated, live in little cages, and that's what they would love for us. So this woman is an extraordinary liar. What she's realizing right now, and what CNN, and this is what, I ta- what I'm saying about the, the narrative shift, they're all realizing that everyone really hates the Democrats right now, and you really should. You really should. I mean that. These people have destroyed lives. They have, they have broken our education system. They have caused depression and drug use to skyrocket. They have destroyed our cities. Um, the, the, the damage that has been done because of Democrat policies, all of these people cheered on by the media who are just Democrats on television, um, the damage that has been done will be two generations easily. The, I knew it. You go back to the videos that I was doing two weeks after COVID. I, I did the two week thing. We all did the two week thing. And then I started saying, you know, the old world ain't coming back. It's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. And those people have killed the old world and they are trying to condition us to a new world that is going to be much worse, okay? Much worse. So now here's another Democrat. This is Representative Hakeem Jeffries from New York. And you're not gonna believe who's, who, who is he crediting? You're not gonna believe it because the states are gonna start opening up now, kind of doing what Florida's been doing all along, doing what Texas has kind of been doing and Tennessee's been doing and all those scary red states have been doing. Who's he crediting now that the blue states are gonna open up because they wanna win in the midterms? Yeah, he's crediting Brandon. Take a look. And the Omicron variant is in retreat. And that's not by accident. That's because under President Biden's leadership, a public health infrastructure was put into place, beginning with the American Rescue Plan without a single Republican vote to ensure that we can do everything possible to crush the virus. And that is what has been happening. I'm going to have to start drinking in the middle of the day. I really am. I don't like day drinking. I know a lot of people like to day drink, even on the weekends. Never been a fan, okay? I like drinking when it's dark out. But the, the extraordinary level of lies. It's thanks to, to Joe Biden that Omicron is in retreat. No, it isn't. It's because the vaccines did not work the way that Joe Biden and Leanna Wen and Fauci and Walensky and all of you collection of elitist liars pushed on us, it didn't work that way. And guess what happened over Christmas and into the new year? Everyone basically got Omicron or got some variant of COVID, including yours truly. And I did have leg pains for three days. And then I took the monoclonal treatment, which was easily accessible here in Florida, which now the federal government has stopped. I took ivermectin, which isn't just a horse paste. And yes, I was okay in three days. And some people were a little more sick. David was a little more sick. Uh, My brother got it at the exact same same time as me. He wasn't really sick. I wasn't really sick. I'm not vaccinated. He is. Everyone made choices for themselves. It has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the policies of these people. And let's not forget, I wish we would have grabbed the clip. Uh, Let's not forget what Joe Biden said. uh, What was it? Right around Thanksgiving about how the winter is going to be a winter of death for the unvaccinated. Huh? Didn't really come to pass, did it? Could it just be that you're a fear mongering lunatic? who just reads off the teleprompter, whatever they put in front of you. Well, you know what's happening? You know what's happening at this very minute? We've been covering it here. You're probably not seeing it on mainstream media. There actually is a shift. There is a shift because good, decent people from the bottom up are starting to fight back. And it's happening in all places in the world. It's happening in Canada. And we know all about the the trucker convoy. I'm gonna do a little bit more on that uh, in just a few minutes. But now the premier of Alberta, Jason Kinney, is dropping restrictions because people peacefully protested, because they exercised their rights that they have in a Western free democracy. And they stood up to the fraudulent, the fraudulent chronic liar that is Justin Trudeau. Take a look. The threat of COVID-19 to public health is uh, no, no longer outweighs the hugely damaging impact of health restrictions on our society, on people's mental health, on their emotional well-being, on uh, uh, our broader social health. So now is the time to begin learning to live with COVID. 
These restrictions have led to terrible division, even amongst families and friends, and uh, inflamed sometimes tensions in our communities and neighborhoods. Uh, COVID and the restrictions associated with it have robbed thousands of young children with the simple joys of just being a kid. Guys, guys, do you think it's a coincidence that he's saying this now, or do you think it might have something to do with groups of individual people fighting back, saying, no, you don't own us. We are going to take our lives in our own hands. We are gonna join together and fight for what's right, which is what they're doing, and they're doing it freaking peacefully, and they're doing it all over the nation, not just in Alberta, not just in Ottawa. Uh, we've got some, some video of the convoy right here. Let's take a look at that. I mean, it's just, look at that. That is absolutely extraordinary what they're doing. Those are thousands of good people who are not out there because they hate trans people or have an irrational fear, I should say. They have an irrational fear of trans people and that's why they're out there in the convoy. That's literally what Trudeau said and tweeted. They have an Ill Ill illegitimate fear of Muslims and that's why they're out there. They're white supremacists. God, these people, the gall, like what? I don't know what could have happened to the human soul that could lead them to that place. But it's not just Justin Trudeau who's soulless. It really is not. You all know my favorite lady over in DC, Jen Psaki. Uh, she's lying about what's happening up in Canada. Take a look. So truckers in Canada uh, last night shut down the Ambassador Bridge, which carries about a quarter of US Canada trading goods. Um, so what's the administration's response uh, to this action and what steps are being taken to ensure the free flow of goods and also any preventative steps being taken to address a possible blockade on the Michigan side of that bridge? Well, let me first start by saying I know there's been some suggestion, not by reporters necessarily at all, but that uh, this congestion is related to the vaccine requirements. It's not. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to get to the protests, but the protests uh, going on across Canada, which uh, have spread to a bridge, are leading to sporadic congestion and blockages. All right. First off, I want to give her credit because she's actually dressed like a witch and it's like a little on the nose. So good for you, Saki. Um, now, interestingly, as per what she said there about the truckers and what's happening, there's this guy up in Canada who actually completely disagrees with her. I think one of the things uh, we all understand is just how frustrated everyone is. Um, we're all frustrated. We're all sick and tired of restrictions, of, of mandates, of having to, to make sacrifices, of not being able to do the things we love. I can understand frustrations with mandates, but mandates are the way to avoid further restrictions or having to be restricted. As people get vaccinated, as Canadians have gotten vaccinated, we've been able to get through things. And this team is going to stay focused on doing exactly that. We're all so frustrated. Nobody know how this thing happened. We don't know. We Mandates are the way to freedom. Well, I don't know who did this. Who's in charge around here? I just have nice hair and I wear nice socks and people think that I'm a really nice guy, even though I'm an evil fuck. Okay, so I don't know how any of this happened. Here's Trudeau saying the complete opposite. Individuals are trying to blockade our economy, our democracy, and our fellow citizens' daily lives. It has to stop. Freaking individuals. Is there anything worse than individuals, you know, peacefully doing stuff? and saying that uh, we're not gonna bow to the king. Is there anything worse? Cleaning up garbage, shoveling snow, helping old people cross the street. Is there anything worse than individuals? Well, it's not just Justin Trudeau. I, I, like, I like that Justin Trudeau impression. What do you think? It's pretty good. I, I don't know how this happened. It was, I was, somebody told me that something was happening. I, you know, I talk like this, so it seems like I'm not evil or that I don't have bad intentions, but I'm really a frighteningly horrible person. Um, it's not just Justin Trudeau, though, who is lying, flat out lying about the intentions and the motives and the actual reality on the ground that the truckers are doing. Uh, it's all of our mainstream media. We've got quite a compilation for you. Sedition, insurrection, a threat to democracy. This city is under siege. They are now calling it an occupation. Alarming situation there in Ottawa. The police chief is calling it a nationwide insurrection. 
driven by madness. This is kind of our insurrection by air horn moment. It's, I think it's part of the globalization of Trumpism. Canadians know where I stand. There hasn't been as much violence as some had perhaps projected, but that does not necessarily mean that it has been peaceful. Reports of severe vandalism and criminal behavior. The streets are clogged. The honking is incessant and deafening. This pandemic has sucked for all Canadians. Residents that I have spoken to who say they feel terrorized intimidated. Residents say they feel like hostages. Residents in that area say that they are being held hostage, that this freedom has essentially, this freedom convoy, as they call it, has essentially imposed a lockdown on them. Some protesters harassed a soup kitchen. These anti-vaxxers actually took food from the mouths of uh, the homeless. Hum hungry, yeah. Because they were, they're, they're, they're so put upon. There have not been any violent outbursts. However, horns have been honking for 12 to 21 hours a night. The small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing. Many of them are holding Confederate flags. I've heard there's QAnon supporters in the crowd. We've seen swastikas. We've seen the Confederate flag. We've seen uh, flags with Justin Trudeau, our prime minister, in a noose. Uh, lots of Donald Trump flags as well. People chanting, let's go, Brandon. It is actually one of the rare times in history you're going to see swastikas and yellow stars uh, at the same protest. What is a human? What is a human being? Like, what are those people doing? I can accept that a certain amount of them are brainwashed and I can accept that a certain amount of them just want a gig and it's nice to be on TV. They put makeup on you, you know, it's nice. They do your hair, they might give you clothes. I do my own hair, they do whack me with powder. I pick out my own clothes. Um, but these people have sold their souls. I, I don't know what, how else can you describe human beings who lie as their main ethos, the main driver of what they do is to lie about people. I, I don't know how else you can describe it. They want there to be violence. You could, that one woman, I, there hasn't been a violence really, and you know, there, there's swastikas and there's, we don't see any images of any of this. They showed one Confederate flag, there's Trump signs everywhere, haven't seen those, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's something bad. These people are evil and just juxtapose that with how they treated the actually violent riots that we had all over the United States of America for the last two years, except, you know, it was odd. I, I, I have to look into this. Why did all of those race riots stop the second that Joe Biden became president? Did we solve racism? Did we solve the policing thing and all the systemic stuff and all that stuff? Did we solve all that? Or could it be that that's actually the Democrats and the media working together to destroy Trump and then they, you know, they stop it when they need it to be stopped and, you know, then their guy was in power. <laughs> Crazy, right? Um, these are bad people. They did not cover. As a matter of fact, they would either ignore the violence when they were attacking the federal courthouse in Portland, when they were burning down buildings, or they would obfuscate it in such a way that you wouldn't understand who was doing the violence. So cities would be burning, cities in uh, Wisconsin, cities, Minneapolis, like you've all seen the stuff. I mean, you know, right now, go to New York City, watch, watch people just walk in and steal a whole bunch of stuff out of CVS. You can do whatever you want in these cities. The drugs that are everywhere. But those are peaceful things. Where I used to live in Los Angeles, when they took all of Ventura Boulevard and they had to blockade all of the restaurants and all of the shops there, the mom and pop shops, and they had to put BLM on them and they were doing it because they love BLM so much or it was their, it was their hostage situation. We're, we, we know you guys are the tolerant ones and that's why we're boarding up our windows and saying that we love you because you guys are tolerant. You guys are the good guys. Everything is backwards, people. It is your job as a, as a thinking free person to fight for what's right right now because they're coming and they're doing it. You have to admire it. This is the matrix. This is the machine in the matrix. They're, they're somehow always one step ahead of us. I don't know how they do it. I really don't. And I kind of admire it and I'd like to figure it out. But you cannot forget who got us here and how they got us here. Okay, you cannot forget and you must remember when you vote. And I, and I can only imagine the shenanigans they're gonna come up with since and how they'll try to link the truckers further with the, the January 6th insurrection and God knows what they will do. God knows what they will do until this election. Like it's really, really crazy. But stop letting these people abuse your children because that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Uh, Stacey Abrams, who, who uh, believes in election fraud when, when she loses and she's allowed to talk about it and be treated as a hero. Again, I have no idea why anyone knows who she is other than she contested 
uh, the election in Georgia, right? Nobody knows who she is or why she's there. You know, nobody knows. But they, she's, she's a child abuser. What else are you other than that? When you gleefully, can we get the image one more time? You gleefully, look at her, look at her. There's only one person in that room who maybe, maybe is, is in risk of COVID and it's her. And she's the one not wearing the mask. But why does she do well, <laughs> because they had to hear me. I don't like these people very much. That's the, oh no, that's not the show for today. We got to, if you, I hope you enjoyed the show today. I enjoyed doing the show today, but we got a real outro for you uh, that Daily Wire put together. But before I get to that, uh, a couple comments from rubenreport.locals.com and I appreciate you, all you guys who are in the comment section as we're doing the show live. Hawk says, science changes, eh? So it's not settled? Great point, Hawk, great point. We're always told science is settled until they unsettle it. And now it's settled with their new settling or something like that. Awful, Leanne Wen, you are a terrible, terrible human. Uh, Russell says they always bring the narrative back to vaccines and completely leave out the fact that you can still transmit COVID with it. You can get COVID with the vaccine. You can transmit COVID with the vaccine. I was booted from Twitter for saying that back in July. Uh, Candace says Omicron will go away and we will be back to the common cold just in time for midterms. Yes, that's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. They are looking at internal polling and they are saying, holy shit, we overstepped. Maybe abusing people's children for two years was a bit much. Maybe destroying everyone's life was, lives was a bit much. Maybe look at the rate of drug use and depression and boy, maybe it had something to do with us. Um, we better do something about that. But now the thing that you need to know is that the machine will now do something with that. The media, the Democrats, the entire machine is somehow over the next six months going to make it seem like the Republicans were the ones locking people down. And it was the good Democrats like Stacey Abrams who were trying to save us from the evil Republicans. That's what's on the way. Know it. Just know that. And don't forget that. And then I think you can, you can think clearly about the issues going forward. Uh, so to end today's show, and I hope you enjoyed another one of these narrative shows. I, I dig this. I think we're gonna, we're gonna keep doing more of these. Uh, the Daily Wire put together a spectacular, spectacular destruction of the mainstream media and why these clowns, and that's what they are, why these clowns in suits should not be trusted. I'll see you tomorrow. This brand new research by Gallup says American trust in the mass media is at its lowest point since 2016 and near a record low overall. Jeff Zucker has announced his immediate resignation as the president of CNN. This comes amid an investigation into what Jeff Zucker calls a consensual relationship. What happened and where CNN goes from here? You were caught masturbating on camera. You since then have been on leave from CNN. Do I have all that right? Um, you got it all right. Sad to say. The biggest media story this weekend, it's the firing of Chris Cuomo from this network, CNN. Late Wednesday, a lawyer contacted CNN with a sexual misconduct complaint about Cuomo. Joining me now, the man who accused Don Lemon of sexual assault. His accuser claims Lemon started rubbing himself. But the even bigger point, I think, is about what the press is. Is it produced by reporters or by repeaters? Repeaters are the talk radio shouters. They're on TV and radio telling the same story every day. President Trump. President Trump. President Trump. 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 Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Telling the same story every day. Repeaters are Twitter trolls who anonymously amplify propaganda and try to wear the rest of us down with their repetition. January 6th. 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 The repetition. The January 6th insurrection. The 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 repetition. The repetition. The repetition. So much of what they are repeating is from reporters, from the people paid to figure out what is true. For a widely held conspiracy theory that the coronavirus was created in a Chinese laboratory. Dr. Fauci, thank you uh, for keeping it straight. Thank you for fighting the good fight. We know the science. We know that masks work. What we have now is a pandemic 
of the unvaccinated. This is really now a pandemic of the unvaccinated. This is now a pandemic of the unvaccinated. This is now a pandemic of the unvaccinated. This is now a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Much of the dossier has been corroborated. What does Putin have on Trump? Has Trump been compromised? But it does look like that young man to me is taunting the Native American Vietnam vet and he's in his face. There is no evidence of any wrongdoing by either Hunter or Joe Biden. There's no evidence of wrongdoing by either Joe or Hunter Biden. What you're seeing behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha. But this isn't about ideology. The biggest terror threat in this country comes from radicals on the far right, primarily white men. As a white woman aware of my own privilege in this country, I am so angry and I can't even begin. Now, too many see the protests as the problem. No, the problem is what forced your fellow citizens to take to the streets. A few moments later. We're here inside CNN Center. We just threw something on fire, Chris. Something's on fire. Nick, you all right? We're getting out of here, Chris. All right. We are not fake news. We are real news. And now the two faces of Hillary Clinton are coming out. The fact through WikiLeaks that she says one thing uh, and... Oh, no. All right, let's see if we can get Congressman Collins back. Obviously, we just lost the satellite feed. That sucks. Routinely at these rallies, we are hearing a chance of uh, CNN sucks. This is CNN, the most trusted name in the world. CNN sucks, man.